Thank you very much, Charlie. It's so nice to see a great crowd here on what's a very important night, uh, I think, for the franchise and certainly for Bruce Landon. You know, for 45 years, or almost 45 years, I've had the wonderful opportunity to be involved in professional hockey. And over those 45 years, I've had the opportunity to deliver a lar many speeches to large crowds, Chamber of Commerce breakfasts, to Rotary Clubs, you name it, and certainly have addressed many of you, many of you before uh, at press conferences like this. Tonight, I want to apologize, first of all, if the words don't come out quite as fluently or eloquently as I would like them to, uh, because tonight is an emotional night for me as well. Uh, tonight will be the last opportunity I will have to address you, because uh, tonight I'm announcing that effective immediately, I will be stepping down as president and uh, part owner of the franchise. And you're probably asking yourself why and why now. And I want to try and explain that to you. Back in December of 1977, uh, the owner, when I was playing for the Springfield Indians, the owner at the time, George Leary, after I'd suffered another major injury, gave me an opportunity to go into the front office. And as George led me to my desk and handed me a legal pad, I remember him looking him in the eye and saying, George, there will be many people that will outsmart me, but I promise you nobody will outwork me. And I know now, 37 years later, I can look in the mirror and feel very proud of myself that I have fulfilled that promise to George. So that is part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm a workaholic, and I'm the first one to admit it. Uh, this business of hockey, the game of hockey, has been all-consuming for me. I eat it, I sleep it, I breathe it, and I've done that for 40 to 45 years, and in particularly the last 20 years. It's never, I never let it go. It doesn't matter if it's a Sunday night, uh, Christmas morning, and I'll, I'll tell a little story to maybe sum it up. About eight years ago, it was Christmas Eve, and my wife said to me, geez, I feel really bad that I should have gotten one more gift. And I said, well, don't worry about it. Early tomorrow morning, I'll go down, take a check, I'll leave it on a desk, and I'll pick up a sweatshirt. So she said, that's a great idea. So I got up early Christmas morning, and I went down to the office. Well, the phone rang. And it was, I picked it up and I said, good morning, Springfield Falcons. This is Bruce, how can I help you? And it was Marcia. She says, it's Christmas morning, you've been there for three hours. <laughs> so that sums up what I'm all about. I, it's been a passion, it's been a labor of love. There hasn't been one moment I haven't enjoyed my time in the American Hockey League and the time, most of all, running the Springfield Falcons franchise. So part of it is, I'm tired, folks, I'm tired. It's, I worry about everything. I worry about attendance, I worry about fans, I worry about my staff, I worry about the snowstorms coming two weeks from now. And it's taken its toll on me. And the other part of it is, not only am I tired, I have not lost my belief, my passion, my commitment to the city of Springfield, to the franchise here in Springfield. It's important to me, and it's important to me that it continues for many years. But about a couple months ago, I hit a brick wall, and I realized that I'm not the same Bruce Landon. I'm not giving it the commitment that I should. And that's not Bruce Landon. That's not my DNA. And I always realized in my heart of hearts, if I couldn't give it 100% all the time, then it was time for me to step back. So I'm doing that. But I'm not doing it reluctantly. I'm doing it because I also believe that Charlie Pompey, when he came on board, accepted the challenges and the commitments and what it's going to take to make this franchise success successful. So even though I'm handing over uh, the day-to-day the -day operations and what I've been doing for the last 20 years, I feel comfortable in the direction this franchise is going to go. So there's a couple reasons. One, my work ethic is slowing down a little bit. Uh, my commitment is still there but I believe it's time, and I believe unless I can do it right, I'm cheating you, the fans, I'm cheating myself, and most of all, I'm cheating Charlie. Now, I'm not riding off into the sunset, thanks to Charlie and the Columbus Blue Jackets and my good friend Chris McFarland, who's here. Uh, I'm going to stay on. I'm gonna work very closely over the next several months in the transition to make it a seamless effort, a seamless transition for Charlie and his management team that he puts in place. I'm going to work very closely 
very closely with the corporate partners that I've built up over the years. So they, they understand their investment wasn't in Bruce Landon, their investment was in hockey in Springfield. And that's important to this franchise, that they hear that from me. I'm also going to take on a new role, a new title, as Director of Hockey Operations, which will allow me two things. It will allow me to work on the hockey side of the business only, which then allows Charlie and his management team to concentrate on the business and the sales side of the operation. And that's important. It's important to Columbus and to Chris that somebody's there to babysit, to watch over the hockey side of the business, and I, and I look forward to that. And thanks to Charlie, it's going to also allow me a little more time. And that's important to me at this stage of my life. At 64 years of age, although I look 50, I think, but at 64, <laughs> it's time for me to cut back a little bit and enjoy some of the other things that life has to offer. So it's not a negative press conference. I want this to be positive. It's a positive move for this franchise. And I look forward to the changes that are going to take place. Now, I'm not going to give up this microphone very easily. I'm going to take an opportunity here to say thank you. First of all, I want to thank all of those people who wrote checks and carried this franchise over the years. First of all, my good friend Wayne Lachance, who believed in me back in 1994 and thought we could put this thing together, and we did, when a lot of people, and I'm telling you, a lot of people said I was crazy. But Wayne and the group of Pro Friends Incorporated, which included the late Don and Judy Bridge, and Lyman Wood, and Frank Antonucci, and Phil Schumann, we got this baby off the ground, and we got it moving in the right direction. But then in 2002, I realized, I took a little look into the landscape of our league changing. Our building was going to go through some major renovations. So I went to Wayne, I said, Wayne, it's time to sell. You've put some money into this, I want you to get your money back. And so, thanks to Joe Camby, Peter Picnelli Jr., and the Mass Mutual Group, they stepped up to buy the franchise, and more importantly, and important to me rather, they believed in the city of Springfield. And they believed in me, and they allowed me to stay on as the president and general manager at the time of their company. And we had some tough years together, but they hung in there. But I can honestly say the biggest challenge in my professional career came about three years ago, and I've lost track of time and years, but it was about three years ago, when we were very close, very, very close to losing this franchise. And my good friend, lawyer Mike Sweets here, he went through everything with me at the time. And it wasn't until I had a chance an invitation, thanks to Phil Schumann, to sit down with Charlie over lunch. And I delivered the best sales pitch I've ever given. <laughs> and uh, thanks to Charlie, he stepped up. He believed in my sales pitch. He, be he believed in the franchise. And he believed in what we could accomplish in the city. And thanks to Charlie, he also allowed me to stay on as a president, general manager, and minority owner of this wonderful franchise. So without the ownership group and all the people over the last 20 years that have made me a part of this, we owe them so much for keeping this team here in Springfield. I want to thank Dave Andrews, the president and CEO of the American Hockey League for the last 20 years. Uh, this, city, this city, folks, should be so proud, so proud to be a part of this league. It is a wonderful league. And Dave's vision for the future and his leadership is unequaled. And Dave, I can tell you, it's been, I guess it's been 40 of my 45 years. I've been in the American Hockey League, uh, three as a player and 37 on the other side. And it's truly been an honor for me. And it's been a real privilege to serve on your board uh, for so many years. So I thank you for your leadership, your friendship, your commitment to the American Hockey League, and everything you've done for me. Thank you. To the media, not just those of you who are here tonight, but those of you that were here before, over all the years, because I honestly believe that you not only supported the franchise, but you supported Bruce Landon. And I do believe also there were times that the power of the pen was not quite as venomous as maybe it could have been because of your respect for Bruce Landon. And that means a lot to me. And the only thing I can ask you to do is to continue, please continue to give this franchise 
the type of support it richly deserves. To my staff, particularly Bob Oliver, who uh, was our first hire 20 years ago. He uh, remains a loyal, dedicated uh, right-hand man for me over 20 years. And Bob, I thank you for being not only my sounding board, but my punching bag at times as well. To the fans, so many of you here tonight, for 37 years, we've grown up together. I've watched your kids grow up. I see your grandchildren come to the games. I will miss the engagement, the times we had walking the concourse. I'm still gonna be visible. I'm still gonna be out there. But I really enjoy that, listening to your complaints, no matter how far out in left field they were sometimes. <laughs> sometimes richly deserved and sometimes not. But I enjoyed the relationships we've built. And I'm gonna miss that as well. Now the tough one to my family. It's been tough. My daughter, Tracy, daughter, Tammy, Kev, Steph, Pete, Anna. We've had some fun. can't say enough about the support, the encouragement. My dear wife, Marsha, 20 years ago, I called Marsha up. I say, hey, hon, got some good news. I got some bad news. The good news is I think I have a group together that can keep hockey in Springfield. The bad news is I gotta come up with a bucket load of money. <laughs> she never wavered once in her support. She never said I was crazy. She hung in there with me. We enjoyed some great success with some Calder Cup championships, and we endured some headaches and heartaches together. She was there with me when I paced the floor at two o'clock in the morning, wondering what the hell are we gonna do to get this thing heading in the right direction? And she's been my, by my side through it all. So I leave you. I say thank you to everybody here, my family, everybody I've mentioned. I appreciate everything you've done for Bruce Landon. And I leave you with maybe not politically correct, but a prayer that 20 years ago became my personal mantra. And it was fitting 20 years ago, probably as fitting it is today. And that is, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's, that's uh, tough to follow. I can tell you, 37 years of commitment. Um, Bruce, everybody, all my friends ask me, why did you buy a hockey team? You got out of the steel business, which was a, from the heat to the fire, and got into the hockey business. And because of Bruce, I did, and I'm very proud that I did. Um, I really am enjoying the experience. So. I can tell you the following, for Bruce it was 37 years, for his lovely family it was probably 137 years. Um, so he is deserving of all the people I know that he can back off a little bit, but he is still and he's promised me, and he's promised the employees and he's certainly promised the fans that he is going to be involved. Um, I promise though he won't work Sunday morning. Um, but he's going to stay around, he's going to be involved, he's going to be very much involved in the hockey end of it. and. Uh, He's certainly uh, going to help us with his corporate friends and friends that he's got that he's made after so many years. I also will tell you that the next press conference we have, um, 
I will be bald and Bruce will have hair. <laughs> so we, we, we joke about that, about uh, what you do and how you do it, and he has taught me a lot in a few short years. So I thank Bruce for that, and uh, he certainly is Mr. Hockey. There's no doubt about it. And we uh, are going to work very hard to earn your appreciation so that you continue to come and, and watch hockey. Um, we are going to uh, put out a search for a new president. Um, I've got to talk, in fact, I see Dave Andrews here. I'm, I'm going to nail him before he runs away from me. Um, we are going to put out a search. Um, it may take a while. We're in no rush. Uh, in the meantime, we've got some very capable people on our staff. Um, Sarah, my daughter, will be acting president in the interim, working very closely with Bob Oliver, Chris Thompson, and, of course, Bruce. Uh, while he says he's going to back off a little bit, we're going to make sure that he does, but he's still going to be available for questions that may come up. So that search will start immediately, and we'll find somebody that has, or maybe hope to find somebody that has as much passion uh, as Bruce has had over the years. So uh, it's not easy to find somebody to fill those shoes, certainly. Um, when you come from hockey as long as Bruce has, I think it's, what, 45 years of, of hockey experience, it's not easy to fill, but um, Bruce has always been very, very honest with me and very open. And we've been talking about this, and I could tell three or four months ago I was really bothering him um, that he couldn't figure out how to kind of step aside um, but still wanted to be involved. And we had a nice conversation. And fortunately, uh, as he said, Chris McFarlane, uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, is, is going to allow him to work very closely, almost as our liaison between uh, the NHL parent and uh, the Springfield Falcons. So I, I thank him for that. Um, well, we plan to continue. I think the last time I was up here, we were talking about the Springfield um, Falcons Foundation. We plan to continue that in depth and certainly getting more and more involved in the uh, community uh, as much as we possibly can. And again, um, you'll see Bruce show up at some of these activities just to say hello to some of his old friends. So it's not like he's disappearing. It's not like he's going away. Uh, Bruce Landon's here, but he deserves the opportunity now to really enjoy his family and spend a little more time on a happy note instead of a stressful note. So I thank you for that. I thank Bruce. I thank you all for coming tonight. Um, on the hockey side, uh, I can tell you how I feel. Uh, I'm very passionate, as Bruce is, about the hockey. We've had a little bit of a hiccup, but uh, it certainly doesn't bother me. We have very, very good coaching staff. We have some very good players. You all know that this is a devel developmental league, so as soon as we get somebody that's really playing very well, off they go to the NHL. Well, that's what it's for. That, that, that's what makes them, and God bless them, that they can get up there and have the opportunity to play in the big league. So I can tell you that we're not worried about a, a little slump here, and certainly we've got players that have a lot of heart, and we have the best coaching staff in the league. And if anybody asked me um, back in September or October when we started that in February we'd be six games ahead in the first place in our division, I would have said, thank you, thank you, thank you. So please, uh, fans, don't give up on our team. They are a tremendous bunch of young men. They're always willing to help. Sarah's asked them a number of times to come out and help in community activities, and they're always there to help. So uh, go out there, support, clap for them, cheer for them, give them a pat on the back, and uh, believe me, the Springfield Falcons will be there for you, just like uh, Springfield has been there for us. So.